welcome back to the channel. It's good to be back with you guys. This is, uh, first of all, check out the new studio. I don't know how well you can see. We'll try to get a shot of the desk. Maybe you guys have seen it in the previous episode. We use it kind of as a backdraw, uh, but I'm loving the new setup here, and we got more room for our guests, and we're redoing a lot of different things down here. I want to say, first of all, thank you guys for tuning in. Second of all, this is going to be a short little brief mini cast like I like to do every now and then. And really what sparked it was there was a, um, there's a fire burning, it seems like, in the Hollywood spectrum. I'm going to try to pull up what the article exactly says. It's from the Hollywood Reporter. Uh, it's about Christopher Nolan rips HBO Max as worst streaming service denounces Warner Brothers plan. Uh, for those of you guys that want to read it, you guys can tune in down below. But really, if there's a fire burning in Hollywood, which it seems to appear to be, I do want to talk a little bit about what we can do as independent filmmakers because, quite frankly, we can talk about the theaters. I'm going to try to get more local theaters on, talk about how they're doing during this whole pandemic. We had theaters in the past come on the channel, especially last year during the middle of the pandemic. Uh, there was a dine-in theater, the Cinema and Draft House in Hazleton, West Hazleton, PA. And um, they came in or they came on the podcast via telephone and they talked to us about how their business was doing. And we're going to try to see if we can get some of them back uh, and uh, even expand the different theaters. And there's a few AMC theaters around here. If I could get a, a quote from some people to see how they're dealing with this. It seems like Hollywood and the film industry is colliding at full speed. And it seems like the actors and the, and the cast aren't getting exactly what they're owed if they're owed percentages in cutback from the theaters, you know, they're not getting what they promised if they go straight to a serv uh, streaming service. So that'll be very interesting uh, as we continue on with that in the future. We'll keep you updated. But again, we don't really talk a lot about Hollywood film and its industry too much and news. We talk about just the films coming out or we talk about our films. But the podcast here, we really wanted to talk about, and specifically I, because I'm the only one here today, wanted to talk about what we can do as independent filmmakers. I really feel like the year 2021 is going to be very important for independent filmmakers. And when I say that, it's true, because not only do we have all these platforms up nowadays, you have the, you have the Facebooks, the YouTubes, all these different social medias that we're talking about that you can put your content out there, that you can grow, that you can find. you got the Twitches of the world and other systems that you could stream on. And I think it's gonna be very important to get your content out this year because people are gonna be locked down, they're still gonna be at their houses, and God willing, I hope that businesses can stay open. But if you have a business that's in the media or any business at all, I hope you guys stay open, are able to find a way to adapt to the new times and just hang in there until normality comes back around. Um, but yeah, this will be the year of the filmmaker. I truly believe that, especially the independent artist. You're gonna see, well, you're not really going to see it, but you should take this opportunity to capitalize on getting your media out there when no, when people don't have media to watch. You're looking at what Disney Plus is doing, and you're looking at the documentaries behind the scenes that they're only able to create. They're not really able to create too many Hollywood industry films right now. I mean, yeah, you can see that there's productions going on in the UK. You can talk about the Spider-Man productions. You can talk about the Batman productions, but they're all being closed down to an extent. Take this time. Limit yourself. And even if you have to, if, if you have never been a good writer, and I'm one of the people that I struggle with my writing, this is a perfect time to work on your craft. Because while everything is closed down, especially in the media industry, maybe you just take the time and wait till that opportunity comes. But work on your craft because you never know when all this is said and done, maybe the news will start looking for new anchors. Maybe you'll see more screenwriters that come out because Hollywood wants to get kicked up and going again. There's so many different things, but work on your craft now. I'm working on writing. I'm working on writing a few different scripts. I've been teasing on Facebook, uh, on YouTube now, and all these other social medias that I have been uh, talking about writing, and I have been writing, and when they might be released. I know we talk about North Strand. I know we talk about Assimilation and those two short films. But we have other films, and there's specifically this year, we are dealing with more of the mental health cycle of things. We have two short films that we're in the uh, we're in the process of working on both dealing with mental health hopefully that's able to connect with you guys we're going back every now and then last year was a year of action we do that and then and then we cut back to a year of what i want to say not, i don't want to say morals because I, I i feel like we always have morals in our films and that's obviously the idea of this channel you know we are a christian based uh, channel and we we do have our share of blood and guts on it but we try to stick with that morality 
uh, trail and that theme. So we always have that, but this year's theme, last year was a little bit of revenge, a little bit of action, but we're going to go back to the sentimental side. It's still going to be suspenseful. It's still going to be able to get the point across, but that's what we're doing coming up here in the future. I don't know when we're going to start filming, uh, but again, because I don't know when we're going to start filming, this shows that we need to take the time and work on ourselves, especially in this industry. Work on your writing, read some more. That's, that's one of the things that I haven't really done a lot. Uh, especially around like screenplays. I haven't been able to read the proper screenplay or get the exact thing that the Hollywood standard is. And I don't really think that you should follow Hollywood standards by any means when it comes to screenplay. Write the screenplay that you want to write, how you want to write it. I don't care if it's mumble jumbled on a piece of paper. Just if you're planning on submitting it, then probably fi follow the style. But if you're not planning on submitting it anywhere and you're like me and you're just going to produce your own films, do it how you want, as long as you know how to read it, and as long as your actors can read it. Make little side notes, do whatever you need to do. I don't care, but read about how movies were made. Watch about how movies were made. There's tons of documentaries, tons of styles out there that you can replicate, that you can follow. There's also a lot of different areas on the YouTube platform where you can check out, and I do check out a lot of things on YouTube. Again, I've been consistently a fan of Film Riot when those episodes pop out. I've been a fan fan of uh, Film Courage. I've 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 spoken a few lines and a few videos I've referenced from Film Film Courage on this channel. I think you guys should check that out. I like the interview setup, and it's kind of what well, it's not exact. It's how do I want to say? It is obviously above us in quality right now with the interviews, but it's essentially what we're doing, and we're talking to cast and crew. We're talking to actors, directors. We're talking to, to musicians to different influencers, to business people. And again, we have a lot coming up on this podcast in the future. I'm still booking some things. Again, with the whole COVID situation, it's kind of slowed down still at the beginning of this year. Uh, but you'll be able to see more coming up in the future. But a lot of the questions that I have about writing, and I guess I'll take this time on the podcast to answer a lot of different things, mini cast, I'll say, to answer a lot of different questions. A few questions are, how do I make my short films? Well, it's all about it's the what they say is it's about who you know, and it really is. We've been blessed with a lot of cast and crew and a lot of great volunteers, and all of them have been volunteers to this point, and I thank them immensely for it for the time and effort. You've seen you've seen these people come back. You've seen the Steve Machitas, the Scott Winters come back and been in multiple films across the last five years that we've been on YouTube. And it's about who you know, the locations that you can get, and the things you can get away with. And and not not legally get away with, but the things you can get away with as in like, if you if you feel comfortable using a green screen and you have a green screen, do it. You know, if you have access to it, do it. If you got the good quality cameras and can get access to it, do it. You know, the, the things that you can get away with using without maybe the audience realizing that uh, maybe it's not properly done or that it affects the quality of your outcome. Um, when it still stays with filmmaking, uh, first of all, take the time to write. And I know that's kind of hypocritical for me to say because two of the films I've written have been in a week period of time. Uh, we had the film a whole mile apart in a week. So that was actually, uh, that was actually me and Jerry O'Gronick wrote that in two, three days off and on and then filmed for four days and then edited for about two. Uh, so that was part of a film festival week-long competition. So that was the shortest. But agendas I had written in a week's time. I got together with Max and Jimmy, and, and we ended up shooting it. And it is what it is now on the channel, which has been the highest viewed on this channel for our short film. So again, thank you for that, and thank them as well. Because without them, I mean, it, it, it wouldn't have been where it was. And they have took it to a different level, their abilities. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, my best advice is basically to work with what you have and what you can just get away with simply. Other questions being, what kind of camera do you use? I like my Panasonics. I'm shooting these with Panasonic, the Lumex G7s. Uh, they can shoot in 4K. I don't really like 4K, although I do like the video quality of the 8K, especially watching the NFL playoffs right now. Those are pretty cool. The video game-like qualities, uh, I can't afford that. You know, it would take my Right now, it would take selling everything I have, and I still won't have enough to buy those. Um, or at least one, you know, you have a studio set up. You need two sometimes, especially when you have my guests on. Um, but yeah, Panasonic G7. How do you draw inspiration? Well, inspiration really 
you know, that's a, that's a tri- tricky topic. A lot of people will tell you to go watch more films. They'll tell you to go read more books that are novels. Um, they'll tell you a lot of different things. I'm personally, whenever I come up with creative stuff, it's kind of when I, when I watch the news and when I listen to other people's stories and them talk, I really don't like to, I don't watch a lot of films. Okay, for people that don't know, I never watched The Godfathers, which is like, if you're a, if you're a filmmaker, you're just over here like, why he's never seen The Godfathers? No, I don't watch The Godfathers. Uh, I've never seen them. Maybe one day, I have a particular niche, and if I, if I don't feel like I enjoy the trailer, if I don't feel like I'll enjoy the film, I just don't watch it. You know, I'm not somebody that's gonna force myself to sit down and watch all these different films. That's not me. Um, so when. And I, and I know that's ironic because I want everybody to watch my films, but I get it if you're not into all the films I create. Um, not everybody's going to be, not everybody's going to have the same opinions. But I like the natural idea of things because typically if I watch something, I'll be like, oh man, well how can I, that was a cool idea, but how can I make that mine? And then you get down this rabbit hole of like, I don't want to copyright anybody. And I don't like, you know, some, some ideas can pinball off others and stories can pinball off stories and you can create something new, but it's still kind of not original, if that makes any sense. So I really don't like to watch all the films that I can. Uh, but at the same time, if you watch all the films that you can, you can idolize and you can explore how these cinematographers and these directors capture the picture. I like doing that a lot better than watching some films myself. Um, like the actual film itself for the plot. I actually like watching a lot of behind the scenes or how it's shot. Um, that's my personal opinion. So how do I get creative ideas? They just come to me. You know, I don't know if there's, you know, it, that sounds like a terrible thing. I get it. It sounds like a terrible thing to say that it just comes to you because it's like, oh, well, he's being, he's being, uh, he's being cocky. And I'm over here like, no, it, it just, you know, I don't write an awful lot. Um, as you know, I would like to put out more films a year. I don't write an awful lot. Uh, I'm out there doing my photography. I'm out there doing my music videos. I'm out there researching, writing. Uh, I'm currently working on a novel you know, that I still need to pick back up again because it's been a, a week or two. So I need to do that. But um, yeah, it just, they come to you. And when the ideas come to you, and it could be through a dream, it could be through something that somebody says. And that's why I like talking to all the people that I can to get different perspectives and ideas and see what their life is like because sometimes somebody's life can just spark that idea and be like, oh, okay, uh, yeah, can you tell me a little bit more about your story because uh, that seems pretty cool and then the next thing you know, somebody's making a movie of it and uh, hopefully you're just respectful and don't use anybody's real name or situations in there, make it your own still. Um, but it, it's, whenever you get the idea though, make sure you write it down. I mean, that's the, that's the biggest thing. Keep a notebook on you Keep a pen, pencil, anything to write it down. Uh, when I talked to the musicians from Powder Cake Culture, Doug and his band, uh, one of the band members said that if they get a cool beat or like some lyrics, they'll actually uh, call their own voicemail or call somebody's voicemail at the house and uh, and like hum it or sing it into there. That's a pretty cool idea. Um, any any way that you can remember what went on, uh, because there's a lot of ideas that have escaped through my head that I'm like, man, if only I could remember what was said because sometimes you get that perfect line sometimes you get that perfect moment and you're just like man I can't remember what it was because it could be there one second and gone the next so again just do the best you can and keep something on you at all times to write this stuff down to get those ideas getting back to the year of the filmmaker I really truly believe that this is going to be a big year for us on this YouTube platform and I think it can be a big year for you guys as well like I said, go focus on your craft, go focus on your work, go focus on branding yourself on all these different platforms. Take advantage of what is in front of you. And I know I always come out and I say this, I've said it too many times probably on the podcast that people get annoyed with me, especially at the university I came from. But as a filmmaker, the most important thing you could do is not a piece of paper that you get. It doesn't have to be a diploma that has your name on it. You can come from the best college in the world, but if you don't do the research, if you don't do the hands-on yourself, and if you don't put yourself out there and actually make these films, it's all for nothing. I'm sorry to tell you, but it's all for nothing. So go take advantage of everything you can, all these situations, all these moments, and uh, this year's gonna be a big year. A lot of different places put your media on, and uh, go take advantage of it. I'll talk to you guys on the next episode. This was a mini cast on the Shield of Hope channel, Hope Speaks. See you guys.